And now, live from the studios of Freedoms Phoenix, Ernest Hancock. Yeah, lunatic fringe, I know you're out there. You're in here, but on which side? No, we're going to find out, you know, and, and the one thing that I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really encouraged by is that we can have this discussion and, and, and we can be friends. But the thing is, is that I want to make sure that we know what the discussion really is. In my life as a last 20 years being libertarian, running for office, you know, having the discussions with my friends at, at church and at my kids' school and all that kind of stuff. I tell you, you know, it's been a very interesting um, path. And what it has always come down to is what is the real role of collective force in this, of government? Think about it. If you can go and uh, I give you an example. They'll have a questionnaire, I run for Congress or something, and they'll have this, you know, biblically oriented questionnaire, the Center for Arizona Policy, uh, you know, might as well just have a fish on it. And they say, do you or do you not support access to pornography on computers at the public library? Okay. So here comes 11-year-old in there. He's going, ooh. You know, we're, we kind of evolved past this looking at uh, naked African women in National Geographic. We're going straight to the source, man. We're going, we're getting sw- Swedish bikini babes. You know, and we're putting going on at the library, internet, and, mm, and we're getting some good, good. Well, well, what's your position, Mr. Libertarian? Trick question, can't answer it. What? You, you refuse to answer? Absolutely. You know, go to the editorial part where, you know, it has me giving the list of why, what, fur, because this is the real answer. Libertarians don't believe in public libraries. Problem solved. How is it that you're going to have a libertarian already agree that we are going to steal your money, create competition with Barnes & Noble in the local video store, have it, yeah, because they keep, and then they start, Barnes & Noble, well, they put in couches. You get scones and tea. So what do they do? Public library here in Phoenix, they started putting in couches and donuts and stuff. And I'm going, when does it stop? So that became the issue. Not whether I believe, you know, little kids should have access to, you know, internet porn. That's parents thing. Not the job of the government to be the parent. And the problem really was, is that you're uh, accepting the concept that they can steal my money to have a public library, library to begin with. So this conversation between the proper role of government and the morality that they wish to espouse by being the faith uh, member of is that's where the problem is. So what is the discussion that we're going to have here? Are we going to be talking? Quit. (laughs) What are we going to be talking about? Yeah, he keeps moving the mic. What are we going to be talking about? Are we going to be talking about the proper role of government in this and the use of force and coercion? Mm -hmm. Or are we going to be talking about you're not allowed or you're stupid or you're insane or there's some mental illness because you have some kind of, I don't know, a relationship with something else? And why is that important? So that's the next question, Dick. That's you're guilty of the fallacy of the false alternative. Now, all right, now you're going to have to define that. Does that mean I can't ask a question why it's important whether someone believes in God or not? That's not a valid question? That's not a valid question. All right. Because— Why it, is that not a valid question? <laughs> you must first define God. All right, well, we're back where we were before. All right, go ahead. Right. How can you say if you believe in God or not if you haven't defined what God is? I'm waiting on you to define it. I See, can't. I'm, well, that's my point. You know, this is where Mark and I always we wind up as I'm going, look— it, I'm not allowed to have my own whatever. I, I get the cre- it's created by every individual anyway. They'll try and say it's a, a you know a consolidated definition by this guy in front of the pulpit at this particular church and this denomination and convention of the churches of the blah blah blah. And they'll say this is what it is. I remember when I uh, right when I got married, 
It's in the mid '80s. You know, we're starting to become a politically aware. Here's a, you know, we're running for presidents and all that kind of stuff. I remember Reagan. They going into him. They say, "Are are you born again Christian? Are you a born? Oh, I'm sorry. There's a new definition. I got to be born again Christian." Reagan was like, I don't know, I, there's a difference. I mean, I was, you know, so I could remember at my earliest times of being an adult that you could never be enough of anything. So I'm, and you're making the argument that you can, you can never be enough not of it something. No, you're making that argument right, for me. And I, will, me man. and I will not let you put words into my mouth. I'm unless, of course, you, on t- you now. unless, of course, you turn off my microphone, in which case I have no choice. Let me rephrase it to this. Aren't you embarrassed to uh, discuss something you can't define? I try not to. Try not to what? Discuss it. I don't care. <laughs> In that case, the show's <laughs> over. I mean, it's kind of my point. You know, I tell you, I, I, I give you it on a personal level where this is going. This uh, July, are, are you guys going on Mark and Tracy's cruise? No. They're uh, a mutual friend of ours. They're going to get married in the Caribbean. You know, my big thing is one of these years I get to go to the Caribbean and I'm getting a dollar out of each one of my kids because they got the private education, man. They're paying for my Caribbean cruise. They're at least getting me a drink or something because I mean, damn. So this has always been a thing for me. So this opportunity came up. It's discounted. It's cheaper. We had built up some frequent flyer miles. There. So woohoo, Ernie and Donna get to go to the Caribbean. No kids. Yeehaw. But. I'm going to be with Mark and Tracy, and I bet you probably 90% of the people I am going to be immersed around are going to be atheist, and man, they're just going to hammer on me, and certainly Donna. She always gets in this, and I told her, I said, you know what? We're on vacation. This is not a subject we're going to have. You know, we might even eat in a little bit of politics, maybe not. But we definitely ain't talking religion because I'm on vacation. And if you do, I'm just going to walk away. You go over there. I'm going to Lido Deck. Where's the cheeseburgers? Okay. So this is, you know, why this it always comes up. And I'm like, the importance of this is what? It's because it's so important that you've written a book. It's so important that you, uh, Mark has a atheist meetup, you know, that they have group. They band together. They got their own little church. Okay. The evangelical, we're against because. And I need the motivation. Why? Because to me, I, am I allowed all, not to First of you're not saying it right. It's not we're against. Atheism is not an affirmative thing that says we're against other things. Mm-hmm. Atheists merely say, I don't believe in it. Just as you might say, or most people would say, I don't believe in Zeus. But the book God on Trial doesn't deal with that. The book God on Trial deals with critical thinking. And that's all it deals with. It uses the uh, religion that uses other things as carriers, as the boat to float this thing in. But the whole story is about critical thinking because people are not born knowing how to think. Everyone believes they know how to think. They think it's some sort of an innate thing like breathing or their heart beating, but it's not. You actually have to study it, and you can't take just lectures with it. You have to take some sort of a course that's going to have you actually working, doing assignments, turning things in, because it is not native. It is not something you're born with. You have to learn this skill, and if you don't learn this skill, then you're going to be living on a much closer to a perceptual level than the conceptual, and that's what really distinguishes humans from animals is the ability to deal in concepts. Okay. I, I, I agree with everything you just said. As a young man, in my late teens, early 20s, most of my education came from reading. You know, after mm-hmm. high school, man, I, I was reading, did a year of college, year and a half or so and everything, mm-hmm. and this was, you know, they just wanted my money. So I'm going, I, I read a lot of books, historical uh, novels on, uh, you know, like uh, Michener and Clavel, and, and you know, I, I got a, a worldview on a lot of things. L. Ron Hubbard. The, no, I gave him one. You know, I, I, I read a couple of his, too. So I was opened up, you know, to a, a lot of things. I'm like, okay, you know, I start understanding other cultures, every, other religions, other um, people's heritage and why they believe the way they did. The thing is, is that when, and I also was very into science magazines and so on, and as scientists got to the, that's why they call it the God particle. I mean, they're getting down and down. When we come back, we're going to ask the question, Is it possible to use critical thinking and come to the conclusion that there's something else? And does it have to be supernatural? Maybe it'd just be wondrous. 
and be natural as heck. We just don't understand it yet. I don't know. Something to think about. We'll be right back.